I think it's time for us to start. It's not raining, it's sunny, we all made it here. So we're going to begin by asking you five to introduce yourselves to this lovely audience. And then I'm going to say a few words, and then somebody else is going to say a lot of words. And we'll continue until we all drop, okay? So why don't you start, please? Anna Maria. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Anna Maria Osula. Um, I had the chance to uh, be in uh, Stanford uh, last year for two months, uh, focusing on cyber diplomacy. Hello, my name is Anna Maria, and I was also last year in Stanford for two months, um, and my research focus was on data migration, moving data from one society to another, and related social transformations. So hello, I'm Jan Reich, so I'm a professor in computer engineering and uh, I was in Stanford last year for nearly three months and my topic was uh, related to chip uh, design. Hello, my name is uh, Ralph Martin, so I'm founding director of Finnes Center for Smart Cities and assistant professor of Smart City Studies. So my topic there was related to mapping smart city research between uh, uh, Estonia and Stanford. Uh, good morning, I think it's still, or it's already afternoon. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Holger. Uh, I'm uh, represent uh, Daltec, uh, who is focusing on international security studies. So I actually arrived last night, very excited, after very exciting uh, tour in, uh, in Stanford. It was nearly three months, and well, Lufthansa was all these flight delays made it more exciting. So it, thank you. Sorry. Uh, for my, I'm not um, completely here, more or less. <laughs> oh, you hold on to that. You yeah. may need it again. Uh, oh, okay. So what these five illustrate <laughs> is the devotion that we have at Stanford to diversity, to conversation, to making new friends, to seeing one another in different places. And I would say that this uh, fellowship program that we've had for a few years has been very productive in all those regards. Uh, I hope when you make your remarks, you will pay a little bit of attention to the folks that you have met at Stanford and what that, um, what that meeting has resulted in, whether active collaboration or just a friendship or a good address to go and get a beer when, you're, when you just happen to be in the San Francisco Bay Area. The um, institutions involved with this, the University of Tartu, uh, Taltech, and uh, most recently, uh, uh, University of Tallinn, have all been um, very supportive, very engaged, and the conversations we've had with them as we've developed this program have been very helpful to the program. I will also say that the support we've gotten from the ministries, particularly the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, has been excellent and made a big difference, and we look for years more of this, of this program. It will be most help helpful to us, meaning to me and especially to Lisi uh, and to Kadri, who are the active operators, these two women, are the active operators of this, of this scheme, to let us know whether now in public or later in private or even by a, an anonymous email, whatever, how we can make this a better program and how we can knit together better those who have been players here, from here, also with the people you've met and you'd want to meet again back at Stanford. Uh, the Stanford folks tend to travel a lot. Uh, I know that you travel a lot, and I'm glad that's the case, but uh, we need to see if we can't um, make the connections a little more obvious so that maybe one of your friends, Anna Maria, can be your friend, Holger, as things go along. Uh, that said, uh, I'm proud to say that the Stanford Libraries, my organization, are fully involved, fully supportive, and fully supportive of everything that Vabamu does. Uh, and I hope that you all appreciate the contributions that this, this uh, really wonderful museum, as a place to meet, as a place to share ideas, as a place to present the meaning of the freedom that you have now that you formerly didn't have, and what that means in terms of your academic growth and your personal growth. So with that, I think we should turn over to Lisi. <laughs> okay, hello everybody. 
I'm Liz Jesse. I work at Stanford University Libraries as curator for Estonian and Baltic studies. And together with my colleague Kadri, whom also Mike already mentioned uh, from Wapamu, uh, we will give you first a very quick overview of the fellowships that are currently accepting uh, applications. And after that, we will turn to the fellows uh, so that they can talk about their experiences. And then you can, of course, ask questions as well. So I would first like to say a couple of words um, about why I think it's important to have Estonian scholars um, at Stanford and also why I think uh, Estonian scholars should want to come to Stanford. So when it comes to research, then Stanford is a world-class university with leading scholars on many fields, including um, the ones that pertain to these three fellowships that we are offering. This means uh, that uh, it provides a great opportunity for Estonian scholars to, to come to Stanford and to learn from our experts, but it's definitely a two-way street, meaning that we would also like to have Estonian scholars on campus so that our fellows, our scholars there, uh, could learn from you um, on you know, many fields, uh, but maybe in particularly when it comes to e-governance, e-society, you know, cyber issues, um, everything e-Estonia and also, of course also many questions that um, pertain to the current security crisis in Europe, uh, the foreign policy, security issues and so on. Stanford also has um, really amazing resources at our libraries and archives, um, at Stanford University Libraries, um, but also at the neighbouring Hoover Institution Library and Archives. So this doesn't mean only that we have great book collections and archival collections, but we also have really great people there, um, me, <laughs> but also other curators and subject specialists uh, whose role is not only collection development, but also ensuring um, that our scholars and students have access to those collections and who can also ask questions uh, from us. So we are definitely there to help. Networking is obviously a big part of any fellowship experience and uh, when it comes to Stanford then I'm very happy to say that Stanford has this very open, welcoming and collaborative mindset which really makes um, collaboration and, uh, and networking easier uh, for sure. And as, especially when it comes to you know, tech sector and those working in tech and cyber issues then it's worthwhile mentioning that Stanford is located at the heart of Silicon Valley. So when you are networking there, you, don't, um, you are not bound by Stanford campus um, boundaries. You can go broader for sure. Thirdly, I would like to mention that um, there is definitely increasing interest, interest um, in Estonian and Baltic studies at Stanford University. In the past few years, as Mike mentioned already, we have been able to establish a strong academic exchange uh, between Estonia and Stanford. So this includes internship placements that we offered to Stanford students so that we have over a dozen uh, interns from Stanford who come here every summer to, to hold internships, especially in Estonia, but also in Latvia. And uh, most recently, uh, we are also able to offer some uh, travel grants to Stanford scholars, to Stanford faculty members and also graduate students, in particular for them to come to Estonia to network here, to carry out research here and also attend events and conferences. So, if there is an Estonian scholar who comes to Stanford and makes connections there, then they can definitely invite those people to come to Estonia um, and, and, you know, um, make those connections even stronger like that. And last but not least, I would just like to mention that uh, we do have a really great support system in place to welcome Estonian scholars to Stanford and to ensure that your goals there are met. Uh, not only at Stanford Libraries, but also all of the hosts and co-hosts who are working with us uh, to make those fellowships happen. We really try to ensure that um, we can put together events, that you will have a place to work, and also uh, you will have people to, to work with. Okay, so very briefly, I will also just go through the three fellowships that we are currently offering. So first of them is the short-term research fellowship for Estonian scholars. Uh, so this fellowship is for six to eight weeks. It uh, comes with a stipend of uh, 15,000 euros. And it is a great opportunity for those who focus on the history, society and politics of Estonia and the Baltic region. 
Uh, this fellowship is co-hosted by uh, Center for Russian, East European and Eurasian Studies, CREES, uh, the Europe Center and Stanford Libraries. And it is open to all scholars with a doctoral degree. Um, and the main goals uh, for that fellowship or that fellow uh, would be desk research, uh, networking and also delivering a guest lecture at Stanford. Um, in 2022, we were able to host two fellows with this fellowship, Lauri Malkso, who unfortunately can't be here today, and uh, Birat Tehin, who is currently in Tartu and should be able to connect uh, via Zoom in a few minutes. And um, this fall, uh, we look forward to hosting uh, Marek Tam from Tallinn University. The second fellowship is Global Digital Governance Fellowship for Estonian Scholars. It's between two and six months and comes with a stipend of up to $50,000, depending on the length of stay. Uh, this fellowship is great for somebody focusing on ICT, digital society and economy, uh, cybersecurity, smart governance and tech and trust issues. And it's hosted by the program on geopolitics, technology and governance, uh, which is situated uh, within the Freeman Smoglin Institute of International Studies. And it's also co-hosted by us, Stanford Libraries. This fellowship is open to all scholars and civil servants or experts who have a doctoral degree. And it can be used to carry out desk research for networking and for delivering a guest lecture at Stanford. Our past fellows uh, include Anna Maria Osula, who's here, Anu Masso, uh, Jan Reich, and Ralph Martin Soe. So all of them are here and we'll be able to talk about their experience uh, in a minute. And we look forward to uh, welcoming Ingrid Pappel um, this fall. And last but not least, the short-term research fellowship for Estonian security and foreign policy experts. So this is our most recent fellowship that was just added to the program last year. It's uh, for eight to 12 weeks of stay. It comes with a stipend of 20,000 euros and it's a great uh, tool for anybody focusing on diplomacy, foreign policy and politics of Estonia and the Baltic region. Uh, this fellow will be hosted by Chris Hoover Institution and Stanford Libraries jointly. And it's open to all Estonian diplomats, academics or civil servants with a PhD degree and at least 10 years of experience. And it can be used for disk research, networking and delivering a guest lecture or even organizing a mini workshop or a mini conference at Stanford. And we have one past fellow, uh, Holger Mölder, who is here today. Um, as Holger said, he just got back uh, yesterday, who, so he's uh, the most recent uh, fellow at Stanford and I look forward to hearing uh, from him as well. But before we turn to our fellows, I will give the floor to Kadri Bayou so that she can uh, say a few words about how to apply uh, to these fellowships. Hello, also from me, I am uh, Kadri Bayou and I'm a Stanford Global Project Manager at Vapamo. So I help Lisi coordinate uh, the fellowships from the Estonian side. I'm going to tell you just very quickly about how to apply for the fellowship. Uh, you can find the application form from Wabamu's website. You can uh, scan the QR code here or you can just simply email me at kadri.bio at wabamu.ee and I will send you the link to the application form. In the application form we'll ask you a couple of questions about yourself but we will also ask you to uh, submit a fellowship proposal. It's two or three pages. We will ask you to submit a budget and timeline proposal and your CV. After that, we will assess the applications, we will interview you, and uh, you will hear back from us in June. And the deadline for the applications is uh, 30th of May, so you still have some time. Yes, well. I did it as quickly as possible, so here we go. Uh, but of course, if you have any more specific questions about the application itself, here is my email as well. And I'm based in Wapamo, so you can always come to visit. Okay, thank you, Kadri. And uh, now it's time for our fellows to speak. So first we will try to catch uh, Birat Tehin, who's in Tartu. Yes, Birat is here. Uh, very nice to meet all of you. Um, I was a, a fellow at Stanford in May and June last year, uh, 22. Um, I applied uh, the previous fall uh, and my project focused on the uh, global rise of populism. Uh, in specifically, I was interested in understanding the Estonian 
experience better and, and putting it in the global uh, context. Uh, and maybe a quick uh, tip to the to the applicants. Uh, uh, I remember when I applied, I was a bit concerned that um, uh, the, the the call puts an emphasis on Stanford Library collections and archives and great historical materials. Um, I'm not a historian. I do not normally do archival research, so I was wondering a bit uh, whether and how my research uh, fits in. Uh, but this was an unfounded uh, concern, and um, and uh, when discussing this with the coordinators, um, uh, it was confirmed that um, uh, that sort of projects focusing on contemporary politics are are also very welcome. Uh, so I had a a great time. Um, uh, got plenty of very useful information. Uh, was able to interact with a lot of Stanford scholars. Uh, and I specifically want to thank Lisi for doing such a great job um, in terms of putting me in touch uh, with um, uh, world-renowned Stanford scholars. I had some most interesting meetings uh, with, with a whole range of scholars from a range of disciplines, um, discussions and meetings with Michael McCall, uh, Norman uh, Neumark, uh, Petra Quattenaude, uh, many, many others, David Leighton. Uh, so it was it was uh, a supremely interesting and enlightening experience. Uh, and uh, also during my time at Stanford, I was able to uh, attend the um, Association for the Advancement of Baltic Studies Conference uh, at uh, Washington University in Seattle. Uh, so for, for those of you who would like to go at a time when this conference takes place, I would highly recommend it. Uh, and um, uh, uh, another element of my stay at Stanford was a meeting um, with Stanford interns uh, who come to uh, Estonia and the other Baltic states uh, for, um, for, for, for their summers, for a summer internship. Uh, and um, I was able to uh, share some information with, with them, specifically those interns coming to Estonia. Uh, and it was great to be able to have this preparatory uh, discussion with them since I'm also coordinating uh, the uh, Stanford internship uh, program or the element of it uh, that um, that entails the um, University of Tartu and the uh, Institute of uh, Political Studies as, as the host institution. Uh, so, and uh, also personally for, for me, it was very interesting to get an inside view of how a um, world-class university works as, as an organization. And I was very impressed by the sort of uh, close and, and, and warm relations between faculty um, and students at all levels. Uh, so uh, let me conclude here. Uh, should there be any questions to me later on, uh, I'm um, I'm happy to um, answer. Uh, and uh, Lisi, please feel free to share my email with uh, with anyone who would like to get in touch with me. Thank you. So let's jump now to Anna Maria Osula, um, who was at Stanford in 2022. Um, so Anna Maria, would you like to share about your experience there? Thank you so much. Um, hi again, my name is Anna Maria Osula. I was in Stanford uh, last year. I have absolutely amazing memories from the time, uh, not only academically and work wise, but also uh, really enjoyed the environment, uh, California um, as such, and, and the people I've met, and not only in the academic setting, but also outside. So, very good memories, and, and thanks, um, thanks um, to everybody. My aim to go to Stanford uh, was to develop my research in two academic projects uh, I've been part of on behalf of Taltech called Cydiplo and CASPA. Both of these projects uh, focus on cyber diplomacy and on education and training uh, for diplomats and for the public sector. So the aim of my research was to look into what is cyber diplomacy how does it differ from traditional diplomacy? And specifically, I focused on the role of the private sector. And this is why um, the location of Stanford in Silicon Valley that you mentioned before was highly useful for me. Um, in addition to desk research, I conducted research, I conducted interviews with close to 20 individuals, and I really benefited from the private sector um, setting 
in the Silicon Valley, and not only the private sector, but also many countries have sent specifically tech diplomats uh, to Silicon Valley. So I had uh, many interviews uh, with uh, the representatives of different countries who are focusing on technology and diplomacy in their everyday work. Um, Lisa mentioned that uh, the, everybody, all of us, uh, have made presentations in Stanford. I got very good feedback uh, from my presentations. In addition to the Stanford presentation, I also conducted a, uh, a workshop or a roundtable type of an event in the Estonian consulate, um, where the Estonian consulate helped me to invite uh, different diplomats, tech diplomats from different countries. So this is also an additional kind of layer to all this, that we can use uh, the Estonian consulate and their networks uh, for our research. And for me, that was uh, highly useful. Many good things uh, were kind of born from all these activities. So, for example, I attended um, a podcast organized by the Norwegian Embassy in San Francisco, focusing on technology um, and diplomacy and also the Estonian experience. I wrote, I co-authored an opinion piece with a Stanford colleague, uh, Charlie Mock, who is a visiting scholar in Stanford, where we spoke about the multi-stakeholder element of cyber diplomacy and ongoing negotiations at the United Nations and internet governance um, domain. I also um, did a lot of research for my article on cyber diplomacy for the Hague Journal of Diplomacy, the first draft of which I submitted recently, so I'm very happy. Um, to do uh, for that, um, and that article focuses on cyber diplomacy, the multi-stakeholder nature of cyber diplomacy, and most of the research I did for that in, in Stanford also got a, a big help from my research assistant, uh, who was also from Stanford. And talking about uh, contacts, uh, definitely um, found some great contacts in Stanford and in the Silicon Valley area. Um, I need to thank a lot uh, Andy Grotto, who was really useful in uh, helping with these contacts, and also many thanks to him in general, because later on he uh, was delivering a keynote in one of uh, the events I organized in Taltech called Interdisciplinary Research Seminar. So he did a, key a great keynote on that. And um, I would say that definitely not only the two months there were useful, but also everything that has happened since and good connections that, um, that keep on developing. And, and uh, um, many people have invited us, not only me, I'm sure, back to Stanford. Uh, it's just a matter of timing and, and, and how, to, how to make it happen. So um, again, I very much recommend everybody uh, to apply uh, to these different types of scholarships. And I can guarantee that you will have a good time. Thank you. And also, thanks uh, to Lizzie a lot. Uh, Lizzie really helped me uh, with uh, many different things. And uh, thanks to her, we, we had a great experience. Thank you. Thank you so much. OK, next up is Anna Omasso, who was also at Stanford in 2022 with the same fellowship. Exactly. Hello, I'm Anna Omasso. So uh, I agree with Anna Maria that that was one of the, the, the most exciting experiences during my research. Um, uh, research career being, being at Stanford, so, so regarding both research and, and networks and, um, and, and also uh, culture experiences. So my research there focused on data migration, uh, moving data from one society to another in order to, to develop machine learning algorithms. So, so like, for example, one of the examples is Upenwa health application that is developed in, in Canada based on based on Mexican babies cry data and, um, and implemented in Nigeria. And I was especially interest, interested in social transformations and developing methodological and theoretical framework for studying this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, uh, societal transformations. And the, the most uh, important result of this, uh, this fellowship for me was uh, networking. So I had opportunity to, to network and consult and we would discuss and, and get uh, excellent feedback from really top scholars in, in the field who are uh, like, for example, David, David Leighton, Mark Cranovet, uh, Jeff, Jeff Hancock, uh, who are not just superstars um, in the fields, but, but also incredibly nice, um, nice people. So, so I got really nice and positive feedback from them to, to my research, but, uh, but also what was uh, especially nice was that uh, I, 
this, uh, these experiences and discussions and meetings were, were not just uh, nice for me, but, but also they told that, that they learned, learned from, from my research, for example, in the field of um, uh, cross-country comparative research and methodology. So, so that was also incredibly nice, nice for me. Then uh, the second um, result of this, uh, this fellowship for me was definitely research. So, so it gave me opportunity to to contribute to the discussions, uh, to strive to contribute to these discussions on, on data protection and data, data openness, and and start uh, a new research line on on uh, social social data data migration. And uh, based on this research, I have submitted uh, two articles. I have uh, I have start submitted um, two project applications. And uh, what was also nice that I was also invited to participate in a in a in a project um, in in Stan Stanford. So, so I'm really thankful for this this kind of um, um, col collaboration. And the third, uh, but not least, um, uh, one of the important result was also cultural uh, culture exchange. So this uh, fellowship gave me opportunity to learn from the Silicon Valley archives. Um, that was really valuable for my research to better understand the, the, the historical grounds of interoperability that is uh, important for, for, for my research, but, but also learning from, from uh, also learning from, from, the, from the history of computing through the Silicon Valley archives, but, but also through the visit, visiting uh, computer history museum, like for example, seeing, seeing in reality the, the Hermann Hollerith uh, machine that uh, that is uh, that is one of the one of the um, cornerstones or important uh, important uh, breaks in in the uh, computing his history. So, so it was uh, nice to, to see this machine in, in reality that, that I have been teaching to my, my students, my, myself, and seeing how big or actually how, how small this this machine machine is. So all of this is kind of cultural experiences be, uh, besides. Uh, uh, besides learning, learning from the the, the col uh, colleagues and um, and learning, learning, uh, learning um, from this uh, this environment have been really, really valu valuable in my uh, research and my current. So I'm really thankful, thankful for for Lisa and and the, and the Stanford Libraries and and uh, Mike Keller and the, the Baltic Studies program who have been hosting my my stay and also Andrew Kroto, Kroto from the program for geopolitics. Um, uh, Technology and, and governance. So, who co-hosted -host, my, my, my stay, and then also to Krista Ritz, Ritz of Foundation for, for financing this uh, this fellowship. So, so I'm, I'm really really thankful for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Anu. Um, Jan. Uh, Jan was also at Stanford in 2022, and also with the same fellowship. Yes, so I, I was in uh, July. I, I went there in July, and the original plan was to go there for two months. And then uh, Lisi told me that what are you going to do there? There are no students in Stanford in, in July, so, so this is completely boring and, and useless. So I, I, I de decided to extend it for some time. So I came back on the 1st of October, I think. So I did see the students. Um, and, uh, and my field is, is, is ICT. So, so one of the topics that was advertised in the call or mentioned in the call was also hardware security. So I thought, okay, I know I know a professor there who is uh, who has done some hardware security. So I contacted him first. He was uh, quite positive, and he said yes. And 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 actually, he was saying that uh, during the summer he has even more time to chat. So that's why the summer time was also selected. And 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 so the topic, yes, was um, chip security, which is actually. Uh, also quite related to the other topics I've heard here, so it's, it's kind of a strategic uh, point. So we have security issues that we are worried about them. They are kind of relevant in current context. And, and, and also when we talk about security, it's not only cybersecurity, but, but many things fail in hardware. So if the hardware is readable and transparent, then there's no point of doing any, any security. So there, this is a, the, the, the point where things fail. And another thing is that 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 the whole um, uh, let's say the the chip um, uh, production uh, capabilities have becoming a strategic asset to 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 the to the free world and 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 also to the non-free world. So this is a very important uh, point and also important point for Estonia, I guess, uh, regarding the EU chip act and so on. But in Stanford. Uh, yeah, so Stanford is in Silicon Valley, so 
for ICT person, this is uh, like chips are silicon, so this is the valley of chips. Uh, and, and, and so it, there can't be an, a more in, interesting uh, place. And, and, and what I really, uh, so from, from my, like, uh, from my uh, uh, field, what I, uh, what I found there really interesting was the technology they were developing. So they were doing uh, prototype uh, chips, actually producing them in a very, very new uh, technologies that go beyond mini miniaturization, like go to the, to the point where you cannot miniaturize the chips anymore. So you have to think of other ways of, 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 of keeping up with the, with the progress. So there was like, uh, um, they, they had a process of uh, some, some monolithic 3D uh, chip uh, production with uh, carbon nanowire uh, connections and so on. So they actually produced the chips. Maybe they were not like uh, meaningful chips, they were like test structures, but, but they were able to produce them in, in, inside Silicon Valley uh, and, 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 and during their lab meetings, they were discussing, uh, you know, all these, uh, all these development, all these uh, open issues. And that was extremely interesting for me. Uh, also, there were many, many seminars, like Stanford is like a magnet for, uh, for researchers. So many conferences in, in ICT field happen nearby. So from time to time, there was a, like a, a mini seminar, just like a full day seminar with really world names like Giovanni De Micheli and, and Wolfgang Kunz and, and, and all these, they were just popping by and giving their talks to the local group. So it was like um, amazing. Uh, yes, uh, so, um, and, and, and a lot of things were already mentioned. Yes, I also visited the consulate. There was, um, and they, 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 there are very nice facilities to, to, to there is also a big conference center, San Francisco Moscone uh, Center, next to the consulate, quite close to it. So there are many conferences there, so it's possible to do an event, a fringe event there, for example, the consulate supports that. So this, this is a very nice um, uh, opportunity. Um, but uh, yes, and, and, and then no, I, I'm, I'm actually... I'm, I'm maybe not a uh, too old person, but I'm, I'm quite uh, a veteran in a sense that I have been in this business from when, uh, since I was a student. So I, I just counted that I have been in, in the research of, of computer engineering for more than 30 years. So, and I have been like, you know, at all the main conferences and I know everybody in that field. So I, it's, it's kind of boring to go to another place and, or conference. But when I went to the US and I visited the conferences there, I realized that I actually almost don't know anybody in that community because in the US there is a huge community. They never travel to Europe or Asia or these places. They are kind of like, you know, in, in, the, in the big country and so on. So I didn't know many of them. And furthermore, there are not so many Europeans coming to these conferences. So it's, it was actually quite, quite um, uh, nice and refreshing experience. So I got a lot of new contacts, new ideas from, from that uh, Visit and then this year I was visiting Stanford again because of course obviously there are many conferences in Silicon Valley so there were two conferences in April and I stayed near Stanford and I met there um, uh, a person uh, Mick Raut who just completed his uh, masters there he was just writing he was in the process of completing an article to Diplomatia and then we just met at the, at the meeting that Holger organized and Lisi Lisi invited me there and, and we just by accident we met and 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 then we had uh, some meetings afterwards and I I think it influenced his, his papers but his paper was very much uh, of, of uh, interest to me and, and and was I think bringing forward the cause of, of chip uh, technology in Estonia so a lot of such uh, small um, set of small connections that are in the end are making quite big uh, impact to, to your research, I would say. Um, and I could go on for one and a half hour, but I give it on to Ralph. I think. Thank you, Jan. So yeah, you can even come to Stanford and, and meet with other Estonians there. Yes. Okay, uh, Ralph Martin. So Ralph Martin was uh, at Stanford this, uh, this spring and also with the same fellowship. Yes, so I was very happy to, to start the year from uh, February at Stanford uh, for two months. And actually, I'm very happy to go back for another month uh, in, in, in this uh, fall as well. 
And I also like to thank everybody and thank uh, thank uh, thank Vabam for hosting and thanks uh, for the discussion started. I, I totally agree with Vian in that sense that uh, that anyway, like coming from Estonia, being a researcher, you need to network. You need to get out. Uh, this is very small community for researchers, uh, uh, and uh, and then even like uh, like Europe is a small community. And then to some extent, uh, I was thinking as well, like when applying, that why should I go where? Why should I go to US? I have quite good contacts in in Europe. I, I know the setting here. And then I was as well thinking that it's actually so complicated to go where it's so complicated to fit in. But actually that was the opposite. To be honest, I feel that uh, restarting your life at Stanford at the, or in Palo Alto, Silicon Valley, it's easier than restarting your life in Latvia or uh, Finland, because this is so open mindset to everybody that, uh, that goes. And that was like a big surprise because, uh, because I was thinking that there's some kind of blockage for uh, like the taxi driver, I think on my last day was saying that, okay, you have been here two, two months, you're American. <laughs> so this is the kind of open, open setting that, that, you, that you really understand. And my real goal was that coming from a research perspective, I didn't know Stanford from a perspective of a smart city, that is my, my focus area. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but we were looking in one, for one project, we were looking through all the publications that has a keyword of smart city, and then Stanford popped up there quite, uh, quite bigly and quite, quite a lot. In the US, there's more smart city in Harvard than MIT, and there are some other centers around as well. I didn't know anything about that, but that popped out, and then I kind of through this process uh, of, of uh, reading the papers uh, of Stanford researchers, I pretty much I met uh, over 10 uh, key directors of different initiatives, professors and so on. Uh, and, and I think most practical thing what I learned personally was that uh, when if a first meeting took place, like I was a bit coming from this Estonia setting as well, but you go to meet some important professor who is like the most important person globally. And then like sometimes he's also director of something. And then my setting was that you need to be very formal and, uh, and this is a formal setting. But actually what happens is that uh, first of all, first 15 minutes is about your personal life, why you're here, like what is your family and so on. And then, then later you go somewhere to the coffee corner outdoors uh, and, uh, and you need to be prepared uh, for this kind of one-to-one -one, uh, conversation uh, and, and to manage it. And it, it is so much more focused and so much more interesting. And what, what I learned was that uh, when I did my 10th <laughs> visit like that, when I went without any preparation and, and then I didn't have any notes as well because you, you master it. And, and this is important because as, as a researcher, you then manage to do uh, this academic pitch, uh, what, mm -hmm. what you want to do. But what is important for, for me and for Estonia as well is that, uh, that our kind of goal is to make Estonian cities as a testbed for smart cities. And then it's very important to understand what is ongoing with other fields as well. And, and I have a quite good understanding what is there in Stanford from different groups. Uh, and then uh, uh, surprisingly, they are quite interested to collaborate uh, with us as well. And, and, and surprisingly, thanks to uh, uh, Stanford University Libraries and Baltic program, but thanks to also our pre-pre-pre-president uh, being there in person, Estonia has significantly good reputation in the field of digital governance. And some people like one, like the most kind of important person as well there in terms of research outputs, was asking me about what, what I'm doing here. <laughs> it's like you have like all the like test site uh, in, in Estonia, it's so much better. And, and another practical thing what, uh, what I'm trying to uh, incorporate here as well is that, uh, that from a social side, that, uh, that uh, I really love this outdoor uh, working culture as well. It is so different um, that, uh, that really people, and then also like if it's actually uh, uh, weather-wise, uh, uh, February and March was not uh, California, what we picture. <laughs> so it was uh, stormy, rainy, uh, and, and so on. But people still enjoy this outdoor setting. And then I, I started to love it as well, really appreciate it. And then what happened is that now in Taltec, we have first three tables and, uh, and chairs as well. Only thanks to that, that I complained a bit, that we don't have anything uh, for outdoor setting. And, and I hope that it actually uh, scales up a bit as well, so uh, a small thing. And then we have some people that, uh, that want to visit us. There was one professor that is doing his, uh, his uh, uh, cap year uh, in Europe uh, and, and plans to visit us. Uh, and then uh, what I also want to mention as a last thing is that from academic setup, I would say that, uh, that uh, professors and researchers 
are quite alike, uh, like in Estonia and in, in Stanford as well. Obviously, we're more busy, we're more established, we have more invitations and then you need to respect it. But, but I never felt that there's a very big no. difference. But in, in terms of students, I felt huge difference. And, and this is what, if you go where you can really work with very, very bright people. I was invited to help a group of students in ICT on their future studies, fu future of smart city project. And, and this is really, the, you feel the motivation, you feel the talent, and, and that has been really kind of enlightenment. Although I wasn't in a planning to, to be that much engaged. And then in the design lab as well, I, I met some students. And then this is really different in perspective of, of students. Uh, yeah. But uh, as, when you uh, mean undergraduate uh, student, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and master yeah. students as yeah. well. Very, 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 very talented and very, very nice. But yeah, I think uh, as PhD, Jan. PhD students are, I think, the yeah, same. Yeah, more yeah. Or less, yeah. But, but like yeah. the research communities is really, really like you don't feel uh, like, uh, like you don't feel like more when you go to Alto University, <laughs> for example, in Finland, that you don't feel that big difference, that, uh, that or, or you don't feel that you're from Estonia, that there's mm. that big mm. difference. But, uh, but, and then obviously, like this entrepreneurial setup and this working with companies. And the biggest issue with, uh, with us is as well uh, that, uh, that we are so much dependent on the local government, national government and EU funding. And then, then uh, this is very restrictive. And, and, and thanks to complaining that uh, in, in a meeting what we had with, uh, uh, with organizers of, of, of that event as well, uh, Andy uh, 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 Thompson actually invited me to participate uh, with uh, Creative Destruction Lab event yesterday that took place in Tallinn, just to probably nudge me a bit into into entrepreneurial entrepreneurial mindset as well, uh, which is important because uh, in Stanford uh, research group, research lab, research centers are so much more financed by the private uh, capital when whereas we are so much dependent on the, on the EU or, or national funding. But uh, this is very complicated if you actually want to do something cross-borderly. But yes, as Jan was saying as well, and others as well, I could continue <laughs> another hour, but I will actually give it over to Holger. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, our last speaker today is Holger Mölder, who, as we said, just got back from Stanford. And uh, he was there uh, with the um, Estonian Security and Foreign Policy Experts Fellowship. Okay, thank you. I'm still Holger Mölder, yeah. And they, well, it's... As I said, I still party in Sarajevo, so I just less than a day have been here in Estonia. Well, it's very exciting here to see the places, as, uh, like a tourist uh, more here, so it's uh, more accommodated there. Well, uh, from my background, it is still was uh, like uh, to return to my roots, actually. That I did my uh, master's uh, studies in this area. Uh, 25 years ago, well, it's actually, yes, this was uh, my third visit to Stanford, and the first one was uh, 25 years uh, ago, where I studied, yeah, actually in Monterey, which uh, was also refreshing. My, I visited now it, uh, well, I haven't been there in the meantime. Well, it's uh, certainly nice places, good memories of a long, long time ago. Well, and uh, certainly all my, uh, many of my former uh, professors, uh, well, have been related with Stanford, but many, oh, unfortunately, well, it's, it's a long time. Uh, there is uh, not many of them uh, remain, to, uh, well, it's uh, having uh, different other challenges or or, well, it's a life uh, makes uh, its own decisions. But, well, it's, uh, yeah, well, it was, for me, it was very, like, uh, uh, good to see uh, these, uh, these places uh, again. Well, it's this, this area, well, it's, uh, uh, new before. But, well, it's uh, some words of my... My stays are, well, as you heard uh, also from Lizzie, so it's, this was the first time uh, as, as a sec for security expert or policy expert. Well, probably this is uh, just, uh, this is first time I uh, go up with this. I just, with, I had this uh, long return trip and I just thought that maybe we have this, uh, thank you, of course, uh, Stanford Libraries, thank you, this uh, Greece, I think, well, it's, uh, 
too long for me today uh, to pronounce as the full name of the institute. I certainly uh, miss it, but maybe also to include uh, for the later uh, fellowship CISAC with uh, uh, Security uh, Studies Center. Well, and I think uh, they have, they might have interest. They actually uh, helped me also in organizing this uh, workshop. I think. Jan mentioned it already. He was also was there. Was there was, yeah, I would say it was success. At least I heard the information that we had uh, ninety percent registered. Maybe not all of them actually visited, but well, it's a certainly good experience also to work with uh, Stanford scholars like Catherine Stoner uh, and. Um, uh, Sergei Sanovich and uh, Glenn Tifford, uh, well, it's, which is one of my uh, many uh, fields. Even M maybe it's a major uh, field uh, right now. It's uh, psychological warfare, information warfare, but also I have, uh, as I represent uh, uh, technological uni uh, university, so it's one part of, his, of mine is also related with the cybersecurity issue, certainly. And with all this, we had also uh, this uh, space uh, security program with uh, dealing uh, very innovating issues. So at also uh, this, as I said, I represent, <laughs> used to represent uh, to uh, many f uh, fields uh, there. Well, it's also all these meetings with the Stanford scholars. Well, I hope that maybe Larry Diamond, which was a very nice meeting, he will write preface to the volume because one reason of mine was also, well, it's very difficult to uh, push you here in Estonia. You have so many, uh, let's say, administrative and issues, well, it's, you have to solve so that uh, to write uh, write a book or it's, we, first we will uh, go on with the edited volume, volume probably will be published uh, this fall. So that, yeah, I hope that, uh, well, it's Larry still writes uh, the preface uh, for that. Well, it's, yeah, um, there is uh, so many information, certainly. <laughs> and, well, it's as I said, it's very difficult uh, to get the focus uh, today. But, well, it's I, I'm avail available. So that if you have questions, uh, so you can get my contact somewhere. Uh, so that I will be happy uh, to do it. So that, uh, I, I think, yes, this is a very worthwhile uh, experience to be well one of the top universities, uh, not uh, just in US but in in the world. Well, it's certainly also worthwhile, and we hope that this co uh, cooperation continues. Well, that we will can uh, welcome US uh, scholars here in Tallinn or that or wherever in Estonia. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Holger. And thank you so much to everybody here for, for sharing your experiences. It was really interesting to, to hear about your different and also in some ways similar experiences at Stanford. So now we have some time for questions and answers. So um, we don't really get this group together like that um, too often. So um, if you are thinking of applying or if you are coming to Stanford um, in the future, um, now is the time to, to ask some questions um, from those scholars here. While you are thinking, oh yeah, go ahead. The mic is there. Hi, my name is Tia. I have a question about the timing of the uh, actual stay in Stanford. So for most of us, the summer is the time which is free, but I think, Jan, you said that there is no students. And how does that work? What's the good timing uh, for I that? Comment, I can comment the summer. So actually, um, for me, it didn't matter much. I mean, it's, of course, sad to see the campus without students. It's somewhat, I mean, weird and empty. Uh, with students, it's a different feeling, but uh, it didn't really affect my job because I was communicating with the postdocs and the PhD students. We were in the same room and that was a company we discussed with. And even when the semester started, that had no effect, uh, effect on my, on my uh, 
work there because I was not communicating with the students so much. I mean, I gave one uh, lecture, one open lecture there on, on the floor of, of uh, computer science building, but, uh, uh, and there were some students attending, but, uh, but yeah, so um, I, I, th I think it would have been sad if I would be only in summer, but I had just one month of uh, autumn as well. So for me, it was more convenient, yes. And it seems also that the professor was like maybe more free. Unfortunately, he had many trips to Europe at that time in the summer. So uh, mm, uh, we couldn't discuss so often. But in theory, I mean, he was saying like, okay, it's not the semester time, I have more time. So when he was there, we could chat. So I think you have to find out, but uh, summer is not bad. And summer is also not hot there, actually. Not very hot. It's September, it was pretty hot, yeah. Um, I just wanted to add that um, I was there in April and May, uh, two months, and I think um, we had some, Anu and I both were roughly at the same time. We actually also had the issue of not that many people on campus, but that was because of COVID. So we were still there where you had um, that time. Uh, that time, but I just wanted to echo that this actually did not affect uh, the ability to also get in touch with people uh, in Stanford and also um, um, to organize events or to take part in events. But perhaps um, you would have more audience for your events if you would not be during summer, uh, depending on what type of audience you're you're looking for. And I think, and perhaps maybe there will be more academic events during the the semesters. Uh, so that if you are able to choose, um, I would suggest during the semester, but if there is no other option, then you can also maybe do half and half like, like the others. So I was, I was also in May and June, and I would say that it was really, really good, good times in, also in this meeting that in May there were students and maybe, maybe more opportunities for, for uh, making presentations and, uh, and uh, attending seminars. But, but June was really, really good also in regard of meeting people because then people were more free, free of, of, had, uh, had more, more, more time and they, they, they were not so, so busy with teaching, teaching and, and conferences and everything. So that was, that was really, really nice, nice. Time. Yeah, I think the issue there is that there's so much going on, but <laughs> but uh, but I didn't know as well that uh, that uh, uh, for example this uh, events dot Stanford dot edu that you can check as well. So much going on every day, uh, and then that means that uh, that. Uh, that you have to fight for retention if you organize something there and, and sometimes if you go with a low lower season period or for me February was very good February everybody was fresh and open and then by the end of March everybody was so busy with students and, and everything meaning that sometimes the seasonal thing uh, affects uh, and then I was advised as well uh, by, by uh, Andrew Gottog if, if going back that October is a good time like start of October it's the same that everybody's fresh and open and so on but the, the uh, farther you go uh, when people get uh, more busy but uh, but really uh, like uh, the level of and the quality of events there at the campus is, is is something you can suspend all your time I didn't but it's 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 so much and then like some Finnish colleagues for example emailed me once that hey do you know that our, our president is next door from you uh, just now speaking meaning that you even don't follow the things that you could uh, but uh, and then there was some very good uh, smart city urban technology conferences events that I missed but I didn't check, and then uh, as well, but, uh, but that, 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 that way, sometimes if it is slower base, uh, that is actually not the slow base. Uh, but there's always something going on, and, and the people that maybe that are not teaching at, are at Stanford, they're more available uh, uh, for, for meeting up uh, uh, that period, yeah. Okay, thank you. I would just uh, like to add on my end that from the official requirements uh, side, then there are none. Um, you're welcome to come any time that works for you. Uh, we typically try to nudge our scholars to come more in the springtime, uh, mostly because of us, because we as a program have more going on then. Um, for example, there is a um, Baltic um, course now delivered at Stanford during the spring quarter. So uh, we now try to incorporate our fellows into that course to deliver guest lectures and so on. 
Uh, the interns that we uh, mentioned before are selected and confirmed in the springtime, so there's also events happening with them and so on. Um, but yeah, as the others said, I would just echo that it depends on uh, whether your project is more, you know, desk research heavy or networking heavy and, and when exactly those programs and people uh, have more time and, and can be more active. Any other questions? Yes, Marek. Thank you. Also a boring practical question, but um, let's say maybe you have some tips how to survive in Stanford in, in, in everyday life. And for instance, if I'm not mistaken, Palo Alto, Silicon Valley is one of the most expensive and, and overcrowded areas in the world. So maybe a few words, how you find your accommodation and, and was there any kind of ideas. And then also I wonder whether some of you were with your family and, and if, you know, what tips you can offer in this regard. So maybe some advice is on a very practical level. Thank you. I have a microphone, but I, I will not take your audience. I just say that, uh, that Lisi was doing excellent work there, like uh, yes. with everything uh, from family to accommodation to like uh, really like uh, going beyond the academic setup mm -hmm. and, uh, and then whatever you had, bicycle. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so meaning that, uh, that, but yeah, it is very expensive. Uh, and, uh, and then, uh, uh, but but it is somehow possible to to, to get through. Uh, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I yeah. So uh, well, I what I recommend to start planning uh, as early as possible. Well, it's uh, first to find this accommodation. So that you have to figure out. Well, it, uh, what are your purpose? Of course, you can find something uh, cheaper somewhere. Uh, not uh, near to Stanford, well, but uh, then you should consider transportation. Well, it's of course you can rent a car. Well, it's uh, actually this is important to know that well, it uh, officially you have to also to apply uh, to the Californian driver's license. Uh, so it's uh, uh, well, it, uh, if you ask this uh, what visa, if this well, of course. Uh, uh, Unofficial. If something happens, you can use this international <laughs> license as well. So, but this is, uh, well, the uh, choice is yours. So it, uh, what else? So it, yeah, well, you can go uh, to um, San Francisco, San Jose, or well, a car train, well, it's accessible. So, okay, well, it's one thing of you, also you have to check, so at war, ah, this, uh shopping area well it's you have to get the food somewhere it's a uh, close and well let's uh, do yeah think uh, think uh, about this well it, of course it's easier if you find something closer uh to uh, stanford but it's not uh, so easy so it uh, probably uh choice as well as this is also the reason well that they also how long you stay so that to start the pl planning uh, as earlier as it it was uh, possible and well yes there are a lot of tips and i certainly can help also but uh well it, uh, in in the process but also just applying all this documentation it takes time and well it's uh so it's yeah it's not so easy i just warn you Uh, so I think it's a very good question, a very important question, especially when you consider perhaps going with families. So these are definitely issues um, that need to be kind of taken seriously. Um, again, for my experience, our experience, uh, Lizzie was uh, absolutely amazing and really provided all the help. Uh, regarding how expensive it is, as you said in your question, it is very expensive. But uh, considering the inflation in Estonia nowadays, then then you'd be surprised that I think um, food-wise, from buying from supermarkets, uh, it's actually not, not that expensive, anymore. rather, anymore, yeah, now considering the inflation, but perhaps going, eating outside, um, that, is, that is definitely more expensive there. But um, yes, you will survive. <laughs> yeah, but well, if I compare these prices 25 years ago, and now this is a, complete, a completely different world, this is one, not not surprised I knew it, but uh, it's uh, uh, one issue I just found uh, found out. So. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. We we stayed in the same place uh, with Anno at different times. <laughs> 
So uh, Anu was there before me. So when I came there, I saw on the whiteboard Tere Tulemast Jaan. So I was very, I was thinking I have jet lag or something, what's going on? But <laughs> anyhow, so actually I would like to thank Lisi a lot. So I, I started to book the accommodation already in December, I think. So I was, my trip was in July. So in December I was looking and, 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 and by that time there were not so many options left. So you have to be early. And then uh, I was looking and I saw, so, okay, uh, Stanford is in Palo Alto. So I was only looking in Palo Alto. I was just like, you know, looking where is Stanford, it's in Palo Alto. And, and then I found one place which was a reasonable price. It was in Barham Park. And I was like, okay, it's not very far, so I take this one. Uh, but I, I still had to wait for the confirmation from my university that I got the scholarship. And it, it, it kind of like, I wasn't informed, so I had to ask them and they said, yes, of course you got the scholarship. I didn't know. So, so and then when I tried to click on that, like book this, um, this house, it was gone. So I said, oh, yeah, there were not many good options left. And then Lisi showed me this house, the, the same house in, in Menlo Park. And, and I had no clue that, you know, Stanford is, you know, at the, at the border of, uh, of Palo Alto and Menlo Park is just, you know, at, the, at bordering Stanford. So I, I was eventually staying very close to Stanford. And, and yeah, so prices are high, of course, but you have to, you have to look, uh, look early, book early. Um, and yeah, you can also live a bit further. I didn't have that experience. I, I, I was uh, I was communicating with some Estonian uh, professor from Tallinn University who was living uh, like a bit further so but he was essentially he was biking there too so it took him about an hour or so he was staying in Sunnyvale I think and 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 then yes and and for a short part of time and or not a short I mean for a month uh, my family was also visiting me my wife and my son and that was very useful because uh, my son bought us uh, bikes three bikes and that was very handy um, so with car rental I am probably not the best person to ask advice we tried a couple of times we tried Turo and then Zipcar um, had a couple of problems, so I, I was not completely happy about uh, this option. So I mean, yeah, but maybe somebody else can comment. Yeah, it's a bike bike society. Stanford is perfect for uh, biking. Everything around is very good as well. And then uh, uh, hiring a car is complicated, uh, even from an insurance perspective. You have to understand and really like sometimes it's, it's too complicated to even understand. And then you can get the bike very easily. Like for me, it was second day, sixty dollars uh, Facebook uh, market, uh, just like that. Uh, you, you get it and, and you have it. And then it's very bikeable uh, everywhere across. Plus another thing, what I what I noticed and what, what I really liked as well was that from my home at Palo Alto to office, it was something like two and a half miles. And when I started to have this walking meetings to office as well, uh, but, uh, but it's so nice environment, so kind of, you, you are in the botanical garden. And, uh, and then uh, I really enjoyed that because that was like uh, something like seven or eight o'clock in the morning, uh, that was like five or six, six, six o'clock here. And I always had some meetings at that time. So, so, and that was uh, for free as well. And biking is also for free. And then as uh, Anna Maria was saying as well, if, if you do groceries and, and if you do uh, biking, you can survive with a scholarship. Yeah. One, one uh, uh, comment. So I found it much uh, cheaper to buy a bike than to rent one because uh, bike rent for a month is around three hundred dollars. Yeah. Hmm? No. No. It's that is. It is right. It's a very high price. Yeah. 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 Don't yeah. do it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So, so I also tried out three different rental bikes. So I can uh, I can also provide list of these <laughs> these store stores. <laughs> so I'm experienced uh, experienced in renting bike bikes there. But one thing I would like to emphasize is that don't uh, underestimate this uh, why some why some application process uh, because uh, getting the documents for, for Stanford it, it can take uh, some 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 time uh, due to the the, the postal postal day delays and so so on. And besides you you might might also have some some other 
obstacles, like uh, like in my case when uh, when someone else uh, visa was 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 uh, was pasted in, into my passport. So so you never you never know, know that some some obstacles can, can always happen. So so please please be, be be sure that you you have enough time for for this application this yeah. visa application process. process. Yeah. Thank you all so much. And um, I will just add, so when it comes to transportation, uh, then Stanford also has campus buses that are free of charge and are really good quality. So if you decide to uh, live a little bit further away, uh, you can take the train to Palo Alto and then from Palo Alto it's very easy to get to the Stanford campus. Uh, but we are out of time uh, today. Uh, I would like to thank our fellows again and also uh, Pirat uh, in, uh, in Tartu for sharing your experiences uh, with everybody today. Thank you so much for your questions. And um, if you'd like to stick around, you're welcome to. You can ask more questions one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, we can exchange contact information. And otherwise, I look forward to reading your applications very soon. Thank you all. <laughs>